today's walk is in search of the crash site of a Bristol Blenheim which uh, came down in 1939 on Sykes Moor uh, near the top of Leeclaw. Um, never visited the site before I found it so um, let's see if we can uh, uh, have some success today. The walk starts at uh, Torside Car Park on the Long Dendale Trail. Um, we're going to follow the trail for a very short while before heading up Wild Boar Clough onto the moor. Well after a, an incredibly dry May, this is the first Saturday in June and the forecast isn't terribly good but as I leave the uh, car park the sun's come out. I hope this is a sign of things to come. Left the trail now, and we're heading towards uh, Wild Boar Clough, which soon we can't really see because it's behind the the trees there. Well, as we've left the tree cover now, we, uh, we get our first views back down towards Torside Reservoir, where I've parked, and we can look across to uh, to Crawdon. Woodhead, uh, on the Woodhead Road, which is uh, which is closed today. So I was lucky; I got as far as the car park, but you can't go any further. Well, I've entered the clough now, and uh, it's uh, it's a case of navigating up the side of it until we uh, reach the top. You can see a bit of a waterfall up there. I'm sure we're going to get a lot closer to it. Well, the last time I came up here I followed the course of the uh, river down below and I just remember it being very hard work but this time I've stayed higher on the bank and picked up a track so so far this is uh, this is much easier than what I expected well as we're climbing the wind's picking up we're not sheltered and now we've got a better view of the uh, waterfalls I think that's the most water I've seen in the last few weeks. Well, so far so good. Um, I've more or less been managed to keep on the path. Lost it a couple of times, but managed to pick it back up again. Um, we're getting, uh, getting towards the top now. And uh, have a look down the cliff where we've come up. Saying what I've just said, I ended up managing losing the path, dropping too far down into the clough, and then having to scramble back out of it. Anyway, I've uh, picked up this good track now, so <laughs> hopefully, uh, no more navigation issues. Well, we're almost on the uh, Bleakwell Plateau now, so it's time to think about our next objective, which is to find the uh, the rack of this uh, Bristol Blenheim aircraft. Well, we're going to leave the uh, path here because the rack is somewhere over to the west of me. Now I'm going to have to uh, get onto that moor, there's going to be no footpaths, and I'm just going to have to navigate to a bearing. I can see a style there, so I'm going to uh, get over that fence and uh, head to that style. I've got a grid reference for the, uh, for the aircraft and I know roughly which direction and bearing I'm going on and the easiest way I think is to travel at the bottom of these uh, peat groves. Now what I've come across are these little stone dams. Now I saw plenty of these last week and wondered what they were for. Now from what I can gather they're there to actually uh, hold back the water as we can see here. Eventually, hopefully, there'll be some. Uh, we'll get some uh, bog moss uh, growing in them, which will uh, return the water on these uplands, and the uh, peat can recover. Right, I've just got my first sight of the wreckage here. I'll go down another, another closer look. There's certainly quite a bit of uh, debris. 
suspension blocks are there. There is a there is a memorial here. Air yeah, training car. understand the plane went missing and it was up here two weeks before a walker actually found actually found the wreckage so strange how an aircraft could come down and then be missing for, uh, for so long I did read that the, uh, the bodies of the pilots were found some distance from the wreckage which indicated they'd made an unsuccessful attempt to to bail out well my next objective is uh, bleak low head might as well pay a visit as we're up here and not too far from it um just gotta just gotta navigate yeah find it i'm not sure what this moss is but uh, I don't like how it's so red. Well, after about a mile of rough moorland walking, no paths, just making me way. I've uh, I've now reached the Pennine Way um, at a place marked Farm Moss on the uh, on the map. Now I'm going to follow follow the Pennine Way now to uh, to Bleaklaw Head. And uh, it looks like the rain is, uh, is on its way. A few spots of wet now. Bleaklaw again. I think that's four times in as uh, in as many weeks. And I think I've now approached uh, the top here of Bleaklaw from each point of the compass. Though admittedly, last week I didn't get quite as far as Bleaklaw Head, I only got as far as the stones. Given the number of times I've actually come up here in the last month, you might wonder what the attraction is. Well, I think compared to its, uh, its neighbour, Kinder, it's just not as busy. Again, I'm up here on my own. Uh, if, I went up, uh, if I went up Kinder, I'm sure there'd be, uh, be a lot more people milling about. But I've seen nobody today, once I've left the uh, car park. Well, I'm just passing the Wayne Stones again, and uh, I'm not sure. I've decided exactly how I'm going to get back. I could follow the Pennine Way uh, all the way back down to the, uh, to the trail, um, or I can cut across the moorland, which might be a bit more interesting. But uh, looking over there, the weather. Um, a bit, uh, looks a bit grim, so we'll just have to see what the weather does. Well, I've picked up uh, a footpath across Shelf Moss now, which should swing round and uh, and drop me back down onto the Pennine Way a bit further down, and then we can make another decision on uh, on whether we're going to follow the the, the Pennine Way back or uh, pick up another track. Well, as I uh, as across the moor, I can see. Uh, Manchester in the uh, in the distance there. That's the Pennine Way over on my right, and uh, we'll be joining it shortly. But whether we're going to follow it or not, I haven't decided. Well, I've ended up. Well, I've ended up following the uh, the route to the Pennine Way, um, or following the. Off. I, might, I thought there might have been a path over the other side, but I just don't, I just don't see anything. And given that it's, uh, that it's raining, and I need to get back to the car, otherwise I could end up with a parking ticket. Got the valley opened up right below. That's where I'm going to go to. Got some point I'm going to start making a descent. That's a view back up to our side cliff where I've just come down the followed it the Pennine Way down. Um, it's been quite quiet for the Pennine Way. Uh, met two runners coming up and past two walkers uh, coming down. And that's been about it. So now it's 
uh, hard back down to the uh, car. The walker on the uh, on the way up. Well, that's uh, six and a half miles done. We're just leaving the Pennine Way now, and we're going to join the uh, uh, Trans Pennine Trail back to the car, which should be about just over half a mile away. And hopefully, I'll be there before my uh, parking ticket runs out. <laughs> Well, it's not been a long walk, it's been quite a slow walk. At one point I wasn't uh, averaging more than two mile an hour. I've made up a bit of time, but not much. Um, it was a walk, which is not without interest. Certainly the, uh, the wreckage of the uh, Bristol Blenheim and the, uh, and the walk up uh, uh, Wildboar Clough. That, that was quite interesting, but uh, that's where all my time went. Um, and I didn't get too wet, the weather wasn't brilliant on the top, but uh, it could, certainly could have been a lot worse. Wasn't too bad, 30 minutes to spare. I did see somebody getting a parking ticket earlier on, so it's not as if they don't check. <laughs> 